Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com, and today I'm going to show you how to make these bubbling bath truffles. They are a bath fizzy, a solid bubble bar, and a bath truffle all in one. But really, their claim to fame? Super luxurious moisturizing oils that leave your skin feeling supple and soft and conditioned when you get out of the tub. So these are made with very traditional ingredients for normal bath fizzies, right? Citric acid, baking soda. Then we add some cream of tartar and that helps with the fluffiness of our bubbles. We add luxurious oils like shea butter and cocoa butter. And finally, some things like polysorbate 80, which is an emulsifier that helps to prevent that ring around the tub that happens when you have a really luxurious oily product in your tub. We're scenting these with pumpkin spice from Brambleberry.com and cashmere from the Huga collection. And Huga is a Danish word that means comfort. And what's more comfortable than taking a luxurious moisturizing bath? Not a lot. Now that cashmere gives it a really warm, beautiful, well, think of what cashmere would smell like to you. So that warm wool vanilla note to it. And so if you're looking for a straight up pumpkin spice, like really spicy, don't use the cashmere. But I love that cashmere because it adds a warmth and a depth to the fragrance blend that just mm, says fall, says comfort and huga. So the final ingredient in this here is SLSA. And that is a powder that is literally lighter than air and it foams on contact with water. And in this recipe, it helps to provide some bubbles. It also helps to make the entire recipe more lightweight in the tub so the oils don't just bleh, weigh down in the water. It's a little bit difficult to work with since it is lighter than air and it irritates your skin and your nose and your lungs when it's just straight up on there. I like to wear a mask when I'm working with it. You'll see when we get started, but I would have a mask around, like one of those kinds that you use for painting uh, that you can get at the hardware store when you're making this recipe. First, we're gonna mix all of our dry ingredients. And so here's our cream of tartar. And I like to put this through a sifter just to work out any of the clumps. And our citric acid. And citric acid is this really interesting food grade product that has a super low pH. And when it's mixed with baking soda, it produces a uh, kind of bubbling and fizzing reaction, kind of like when you were a kid and you did the volcano experiments in science class. That's exactly what it does in this product. Now I'm gonna start working with my lighter weight powders, my baking soda and my SLSA. So I am gonna put this mask on. It you can get butter masks, of course, but this does help a little bit with the particulates. So I'm gonna add my, this is my baking soda. Just gonna put that in. Oop, there we go, it's pretty heavy, which is nice, but it still can floof a little. Woo, look at that. And I like to use a whisk to get this through. And now it's time to add our SLSA. And this is lighter than air. It's the reason we're wearing the mask. So we're gonna gently put it in and I'm gonna use a spoon just to kind of spoon it in gently. I'm gonna find my spoon, it's gonna be great. So here I have a wide mouth spoon, literally, cause if you just dump this whole thing in, it clouds so much SLS. Just gonna kind of fold it in just a little. That way it doesn't just sit on the top. Here we go, another gentle, because it'll cloud up. And it really can irritate lungs and nasal cavities. You don't need to use it in this recipe, but it is part of the dry ingredients. So if you don't use it, you'll need to increase your other dry ingredients. And like I said, it definitely helps with the lightness and the fluffiness of the entire recipe. It adds some bubbles, and it really makes the entire recipe feel more luxurious in the tub. Without the SLSA, this is just a bath truffle. You're not gonna be getting any bubbles without it. I obviously think it's totally worth the extra hassle of trying to work with it, but this is definitely the part that requires a little bit of patience as you slowly fold your SLSA into your dry ingredients. So our color for these comes from the Brambleberry Dark Red Brazilian Clay, which is an all natural colorant. I'm just gonna do a teaspoon for the entire batch because this, this little clay has really great coloring ability. And I'm just gonna gently fold it in. Remember this still has SLSA that can easily go airborne on us. So we don't want to 
be too quick about doing our stirring, but we do want to mix it in a little, little bit. We are going to be mixing a lot later once we add our wet ingredients, but for right now, I just want to get those dry ingredients mixed in pretty completely and thoroughly. Now I'm going to set this aside and start working with my wet ingredients. And since I'm done with my dry ingredients, I can take this guy off. Whew, so much more comfortable. So this is the Brambleberry cocoa butter, and this is the scented cocoa butter. You could totally use deodorized cocoa butter, but I think that this really adds a beautiful chocolatey note to the entire recipe. Then this is shea butter, and shea butter in the bathtub it just feels so luxurious and moisturizing. It's wonderful. And then we're going to add pumpkin extract. So this entire recipe is of course all about the pumpkin. So pumpkin extract is high in antioxidants. And so for your skin that helps it with free radicals and is really going to help with those kind of anti-aging properties that you might be able to get with this product. And these are the two ingredients that I really love in this recipe because that's polysorbate 80 does help with making sure that your cleanup after you take this really luxurious moisturizing bath isn't nearly as bad as it could be, right? Because that horrible ring that you will often get when you're bathing with really moisturizing oil-based products, the polysorbate helps to emulsify that and actually turn it into almost a soap that rinses more cleanly away. Now, you still might have a little bit of ring around the tub after this, but it's way better without the polysorbate. And then the liquid glycerin just adds some humectants to the entire uh, recipe and helps us with the pliability when we get into mixing. So now I'm gonna put all this in the microwave and melt it. Now, when you take this out of the microwave, it might be very warm. And so I've got a little makeshift pot holder here. Now I need to just measure out my fragrance oil. Mmm, cashmere from Brambleberry, smelling so good. And then I'm gonna do an, then I'm gonna do an equal part of the pumpkin spice. And both of these just color just a little teensy bit, but we didn't find it to be enough to really ruin the overall color or look and feel of these really adorable bath ice cream truffle things. What are they called? It doesn't bath matter. Truffles. Bath yeah. truffles, yeah. <laughs> Both of these fragrances discolored just a little bit, but we didn't find that they discolored enough to really ruin the overall look of the entire project. So now I'm just gonna give this a little stir to make sure my fragrance oil is fully mixed and fully incorporated in. And then I'm gonna put gloves on, and there's two reasons for that. One, this particular uh, recipe, like anything that would contain baking soda and citric acid, is it'll scour your fingernail polish off. Literally, like it's an abrasive product, and so it'll scour your fingernail polish off. And I like my fingernail polish and would like it to stay on. Two, it's also a lot, this can get really sticky, and it definitely sticks to hands. And so when you have the gloves on, it tends to be just a little bit less sticky. Also, let's be honest, it's more sanitary to wear gloves, especially if you're gonna sell this product, you have to wear gloves. So now I'm gonna slowly incorporate my wet ingredients into my dry ingredients, stirring the entire time. I'm just gonna fold it in, and eventually I'm gonna get my hands in there and work that, but until I get everything kind of mixed in, I won't do that, partially because these wet ingredients are currently 200 degrees. So I don't really want to put my hands directly into 200 degree wet, hot liquid. So by mixing it with the dry ingredients, we bring that temperature down to a much more manageable temperature. So I'm just folding it in gently using this wide spatula from Brambleberry. Now remember that SLSA can be extremely irritating on the nose, so stir all, everything in really carefully. If it bothers you at all, put that mask on. There's no point in working and being irritated. So if it bothers you at all, get your mask on. Now, when I'm doing this, this kind of feels like a light and fluffy bread dough almost, or a mm, chocolate chip cookie dough. Feels really nice in consistency. Definitely, I've found that there's some ideal temperatures for working to mold this. So if you can't figure it out by feel what the ideal temperature would be to mold these, it's about 85 to 100. You can always put this in the refrigerator to cool it down. It cools down pretty quickly though. 
Or if you're working too slowly and you find that you find that really what ended up happening was this got too cold, you can put the entire thing in the microwave to soften everything up. Much hotter than about 100 though, and this gets really soft and it won't really hold its shape. One of the keys you wanna do is really keep, one of the keys you wanna do is really keep going underneath to get all that dry powder from underneath because like any baking project, the dry powder kinda wants to stick on the bottom. So get all that dry powder from underneath while you're working this in. It's starting to get really, it's starting to cool down. So it's getting a little bit tackier, getting a little bit harder to mix. OMG. <laughs> now, if you have fibromyalgia or arthritis in your hands, and this is just isn't really in your cards, you could use a stand mixer as well, if you have one of those, to kind of get this all mixed in, similar to, again, to mixing a cookie dough up. Now, I'm fully mixed in. This looks great. I'm just gonna, now this feels like it's gonna hold a shape really nicely. I am gonna just check though a temperature, just do a really quick temperature gauge because the last thing I wanna do is scoop a bunch of ice cream scoops and then have them whoop, not hold their shape. At 102, so this is perfect. Now I've gone ahead and covered a board with some freezer paper. That really helps with the sticking from this entire thing. So you want to be able to pull these off straight when they're dry, which takes about a day or two, and the freezer paper will help with that. It's the perfect consistency, it's the perfect temperature. Now we're ready to take our ice cream scoop and scoop away. I'm gonna take my gloves off so I can just kind of have a little more tactile feel to see what I'm doing. And this is just an ice cream scoop and I've got it flat on the bottom. And then, oh, that's so pretty. Better. Yeah. Okay, so pressing down just a little bit because I want it to be even not get too many air bubbles in there. Whip. Now that we're all done, there's just one more thing to do to give it just a little bit of extra sparkle. This is the Brambleberry Gold Sparkle Mica, and these are the little powder sprayers. And you can just spray the top with a light dusting of gold. And if you want a slightly heavier hand at this, you can always use this to sift on as well. So it's just a matter of how much gold sparkle you want on the top. So let me show you both. So this is a little bit of the gold. Just put it in carefully and then tap with your finger. And you notice that's a much more heavy handed gold. So it's just a matter of kind of what you're looking for for your finishing touch. I personally like it with slight, with the more kind of fine dusting. So I'm gonna use this guy because it gives it a really nice fine sheen. Then once this is all done, you just wait for one to two days, maybe a little bit longer if you're in a wet, humid environment, but one to two days until it's nice and dry and then you can package these up to give away or to sell. To use them, rather than just dumping the entire thing clunk in the tub, I like to break them up underneath the hot running water. I find I get a better bubble that way. But no matter what you do, the warmth of your water is going to melt these completely and give you a wonderfully moisturizing conditioning bathtub. Thanks for watching, you guys. Until next time, bye. these are all out I'm just gonna let them sit for one to two days until they're hard enough to kind of pick up and handle and then from there to use them you just run it under hot running water kind of break it up and you're done but first <laughs> the finishing touch shut up <laughs> I have to redo that whole thing. Now, when you take this out of the microwave, it could be very hot. So that's why I have a little guy here. So I have a little guy. It's a little guy. 